At this time, uh, I'm going to introduce the gentleman here, that lifelong resident, full blood relative, one of the last remaining fluent speakers here on Le Couture. And he's going to bless this ground that we're standing on today so that everything will be right and look, be looked down upon in a good way. His Anishinaabe name is Badwewe Dun Benes, a.k.a. Eddie Benton. Eddie's a full-blooded Ojibwe, one of the last uh, fluent uh, Ojibwe speakers on Lakutere. He was born in a wigwam south of Reserve, between Signer and Reserve. Currently, he's the Dean of Native American Studies in Jingwa University, the pine tree. University in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. He's been there for the last five years. Eddie is a vet, served in the U.S. Army, and was in the elite 101st Airborne Division. He attended, uh, he's a graduate of uh, University of Minnesota, California West. He's a former administrator of the Lacunare K-12 school. And he is also the head of the Free Fires Medewan Society of the Ojibwe Nation. So at this time, I everybody give uh, Eddie a round of applause and welcome him here in a good way. Eddie. happens. <laughs> BIA equipment here. <laughs> We're going to ask you to uh, honor this uh, and recognize this ceremony by accepting a, a little bit of tobacco in your hand. And if you will, put that in your left hand. And as we go along here, we'll also share with you some uh, instructions, what it means, why we do it, and what our hope for outcome is. While I'm at it, though, let me share some, uh, just a few words of history about this old building behind us there, the old Kinnaman School. Quite a few years ago, I heard the, uh, the effort to uh, dismantle it. And some of us put up a protest because it has a lot of meaning for some of us. And those of you whose grandmothers and grandfathers went to school here, I want to share some, some thoughts and some memories with you. This ground where we are, which will become this memorial, still bears the tracks of the original people of this, of this land. Our grandmothers and grandfathers, our ancestors, going back thousands of years. Where we are standing, their tracks are still are still there. And more recently, when this became the first public school on the reservation, it might, it might actually have been the second uh, public school because there was one before that down in reserve. But uh, this, this one here, I, I have a lot of memories about it, and I want to share some of those with you because those people I'm talking about and will talk about are your, your grandmothers, your grandfathers, your aunties, uncles, who went to school here. Right here where we're standing, 
that road there going up to the tribal office ended right there on Highway B. This part here was all part of Frank Promo's uh, potato field, corn field, garden. His children used to walk to school from uh, that house that still stands there. Laverne Trepania and Joyce, they used to walk from where the WOJV is or near there uh, to school every day. And down at the corner where the, uh, where the road curves to the north, that's where we lived and that's where I walked. Down over here was the Patrick family, uh, Neil, uh, Betty Jane, and uh, others, and Pat Martinson. They all lived uh, straight down to the lake here, and they used to walk. The Smith family lived uh, further down towards the boulevard. They were lucky because they had a bus. Somebody picked them up every day. <laughs> But uh, some of the people that went to school here, all of Round Lake, all of the people of Round Lake, your ancestors, Rusty's dad, Russell, his uncle Dick, Harold Frog, gone now. Many of them walked, many of them rode a bus. John, old John Stone, without a driver's license, and Never been able to read was the bus driver from uh, Round Lake to the Kinnaman School. Over in Reserve, almost all of this end of Reserve went to school here. The DeMars, the Bilal's, Trepaniers. As I remember them, right where you're standing there, all of you was our ball field. I used to be able to hit a home run all the way from here to that garage. <laughs> and I was a fast runner. So the, this place and this time brings a lot of memories and I'd like to put that down on paper for us uh, someday soon. Because there is a lot of history here in our people. Our people treasured this school. It was our it was our step into the future. It was the first uh, public school, or maybe the second, that was totally Indian patrol. So the building is worth saving. This land is worth saving for the tracks that are still here, the memory of our people. Any time that we as a people can save land, save memories, it's worth the effort. There are songs that were sung here, just like the song that you heard here. That song indeed has a history. There was a soldier, a veteran from our Red Lake Reservation, who was a tail gunner, who on a, on a combat mission, they were being attacked by the German, German Air Force. And he uh, thought that he was going to not make it back that day. His name was Ar Oliver Gibbs. That's Anna Gibbs's uh, great nephew. Anna Gibbs is the current uh, leader of the uh, Panima, the Dewan Lodge. Oliver Gib Gibbs that day was firing his uh, his machine gun from the uh, from the tail end of an of an uh, aircraft, and all of a sudden he heard crackling in his, in his uh, earphones. This story was well related in our language during the celebrations at Red Lake. And he shook his head and he took off his earphones because that is not the sound that is supposed to be coming over the earphones. He shook those uh, earphones and he put them back on. And he reports that when he put the uh, earphones back on, he heard a drum, and he shook his head again, but he began to listen, and that drum sound went on for, for a few minutes, and he had stopped firing his uh, weapon, 
And soon that that song that we just heard was originally known as a soldier song. Came over the earphones with those words in our language. And that's where that song was reborn. It was reborn as the Air Corps song. And so it's a very great song and has a lot, a lot of a lot of sentimental, a lot of spiritual meaning to us. I'm always honored to hear it. As we go in here, I'm going to call your attention to there are four small poles that have been placed in the ground here at the four cardinal directions. I saw one here someplace. Uh, right here. <laughs> so that happens when you get 78. When I ask everybody, uh, when we get done here, the tobacco you're holding, go and put the tobacco down at the uh, four cardinal points. There's a little eagle feather hanging off the off of that stick there, and we're going to ask you, everybody, to protect them. Let's not uh, let's not do anything to uh, desecrate to take the meaning away from this, what we are doing here. Let's protect this ground for what, what it'll be. The picture of that is right here. So I'm gonna ask you to do that in a, in a very good way. Everybody, put your tobacco down, even, at, even all of it at one, at one if you want to. It is what will, it is what will carry our words, our thoughts at this time into the future and someday we'll see this beautiful this beautiful monument here i'm really glad to be home for this and i'm really happy that you've asked me to do this so first groundbreaking i'm i'm a part of it. so i'm going to do a combination of uh, prayer in our sacred language and uh, our adopted language the english language so uh, I ask you at this time, uh, tobacco is for prayer. It was given to us as a medium of prayer. Tobacco wasn't given to us to, uh, to put uh, or cause cancer in our body. It's a very sacred uh, element of prayer. So I'm gonna ask you at this time to join me and uh, say the words in your language, in your way. As we all know by this time in civilization that all prayer reaches the same place because there is only one creator and there is only one earth that's the mother of all living things. So at this time then I'd like to ask you to, to join me in this prayer and we ask the spirit to look down upon us in kindness and recognition and to hear our prayer, our prayer together, no matter our beliefs, no matter our political strifes, we are one people, we are all related. So if you will, I'll begin. Where <laughs> You know, we went in and said, We know the Kina Oya Mabayat. And today, Mama Bonji, Nibo Yang, Uma Weep, Pada Kedeki O. Veterans Memorial Asian Kate. The Vedashi wind of our Goyan, Nina Sag Kine and Endamon. Nina Sagi Oasian Queen, the Mang and the Queen Mint. Kakina Okichida, 
revolutionary war Magi me got the war of 1812 as you know the oh the me got it the war between the north and the south you know I gave you you we do cause it in Shinabe World War One guy is in a card you know I gave guys in a card World War Two you know I guys in a card Korea you know, I was in a desert storm. You know, I was in a you know, my desert sands, I in a You know, Afghanistan, the Kinaguja, Kiwi do Kazudan, Shinabe, the Kinawe Wena, the Mikwenima. Grandfather, creator, spirit of Zaw, you recognize when you know and you love all of the languages that you gave to your to your children of every color of every nation of every way we come to you together today in this place this bit of ground that is sacred to us that still holds the tracks of the original people of this part of the world that still holds the tracks and remembers the tracks of our grandmothers and our grandfathers, 40 generations back behind us, who come at this time gathered in remembrance and honor and respect of all of our uncles and all of our aunties, our brothers, our sisters who served this country in every capacity, never waiting for the draft, but always leaping to our feet to be the first to protect our land, to protect our ways. It is recorded without a doubt that we, the smallest number, the smallest number of any ethnic group in this country, were always the most, the most willing to volunteer our service, our time, our lives, our dedication, because we love our land. We love where we are. We love that the Creator has given to us. Today we come to consecrate this ground in honor and respect for all of that and all of those that we remember and even those that we do not remember, including those that we do not know, that this, the small piece of original land, shall return as it was given by the Creator to the children of the earth. We ask you to hear our words, our thoughts, and our prayers. Take care of our children wherever they are. Take care of the soldiers who are still over there, who are still over there fighting a, a political war of not, that is not of our making, but serving our country nonetheless. We thank you for the things that we have left. We thank you for what we are what you've given us. We shall persevere in taking care of our land, taking care of our language, taking care of our ancestors, taking care of our children to the seventh generation after us. We ask you at this time to hear each and every one of us as we give our thanksgiving for this life, for all that we are and for all that is yet to come. I'm going to go to
My uncle, uh, mind you, before you leave, that uh, you put that tobacco down in uh, four directions. There's uh, little sticks with uh, tobacco pouches on it and uh, eagle feathers, and they're situated by the building over here, one over here by the uh, fire number, and one right there by uh, Mr. Mike Table, Taylor. I want to introduce our tribal chair here today, Mr. Gordon Thayer. And Gordon has served this community back in the 80s as a chairperson also. But I also want to recognize his service in Vietnam. He was in a elite unit. It was called Para Rescue, and they, their mission was to save lives, wounded, try to keep keep them going. And in the process of his service, Gordon uh, received one of the highest decorations that a a person can receive: the Silver Star. It's, it's not just given away. It, uh, a lot of our soldiers that went out into combat and you talk to them that they didn't have medals on their mind, awards on their minds. It's a brotherhood. You don't worry about yourself. You're, you're busy worrying about your friend next to you rather than about your own, your own self and your own self-preservation. Uh, Watching out. And that's why they, they call them battle buddies. And Gordon did that to the highest degree, and he received the Silver Star for not only bravery, but also to his comrades in arms. And so at this time, if you give uh, Mr. Gordon Thayer, uh, chairperson of the Lakota Ray Reservation, a big round of applause. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you. I also acknowledge Rusty, 20-year veteran, uh, U.S. Army, retired. Many other veterans here today from all different uh, branches of the service. We also recognize our women veterans that we have served and are serving today. This is really an honor to be here this afternoon, and I'm just really uh, delighted that uh, the, the day turned out beautiful. Uh, I just would like to uh, also uh, acknowledge uh, the um, Joanne Kaigaby family. Joanne, uh, an elder distinguished elder of our community, passed on last night. I'd like to say a prayer for the, for the family, for the Kaigibi family, and uh, we're going forward here with our mission here to uh, recognize all of our veterans. Lord, we come before you, Creator, Father God. We seek you today. We pray that you give peace of mind and comfort to the family of Joanne Kaigaby. Uh, we pray that this is a hard time and also for Councilman Larry Kaigaby who, Lord, who seen, said this morning he's here in spirit even though he can't be here. We ask your blessing upon them and all of our veterans who continue today and as we go forward. Let this be a monument of a testament to what uh, we do in our community to serve our country and we just thank you and I ask this in your name I pray Amen. I just want to say that this is a special day because you know uh, veterans are, are held in high regard and I'm glad this is going out over WOJB they're broadcasting this live today and to going out throughout our community surrounding with a probably within a hundred mile radius where other communities as well are, sir, are recognizing uh, their veterans. And many of our people during the wars, in World War I and so forth going forward, even back, um, we fought alongside our brothers of different nationalities to defend uh, our right and our country. And I, I, I uh, was honored to uh, receive a several high awards, but I wear them in respect to all the friends that gave their lives that couldn't come home. 
and those that are fighting yet today and our veterans that are in the Middle East fighting and we have veterans here today that are with the Gulf War uh, but we we salute everyone that's in this listening voice this listening range of uh, WOJB here today we have veterans also we recognize that we defended our homeland our treaties we can't forget those veterans who fought here not too long ago uh, that fought for our treaty rights here our inherent rights that the Creator gave us and we'll continue to we'll continue to uphold them just as we uphold our Constitution of the United States of the Lakuteray tribe but we are members of this community and we want to build our community and we want to uh, build the lives of people in our community a lot of right now we got we got a war going on we got a war going on of uh, of uh, drugs and alcohol in our communities that we need to extinguish we need to fight it with the same fervor that we fought in the wars across this globe we can't let that enemy tear down the fabric and the spirit of our community i want to give special recognition to the shakopee mitawakan sioux community who graciously gave us a one million dollar grant here we received in january to uh, move things forward to stabilize our tribe and the economy of our tribe and one of the things of course that we looked at when we went forward was we could not ref forget about our elders and our and our veterans so this is a part of that uh, what you see to uh, my, both my sides right and left here is these are conceptual drawings this is not just this is not the drawing that we're going to have. Uh, we, we've commissioned uh, Sarah Baldwin to do a, um, and she'll be coming up here in a minute to share what she does. And uh, she's got a book of elders that uh, is, was really inspiring when we seen it the other day. So we're, we're, we, sh we got these drawings here to give you an idea of what, um, what it might look like. But I tell you, it's going to be beautiful. We're going to actually do it in phases. The, the, we have to get this first phase done by October. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to get a lot of work done here. We have the groundbreaking here. Uh, I would hope that we would have veterans up here that were from uh, World War. I don't think we have anybody here from World War I. Maybe Vernon. No, Vernon, you were in, <laughs> you were in Vietnam. But um, we'll have... Uh, the groundbreaking here. I know um, my friend uh, Jim Schlender Jr. He was with the Gulf War. He was a combat veteran over there, and, and there's others here today. But I'm also delighted for the Kudre Amvets, who've worked diligently, to, as Rusty said before, to put together a, a recognition that also includes not just tribal members, but other veterans from our around our area. I'm just really proud to be a lifelong member. My wife Sheila and I are members and my wife Sheila is here today with our, our grandchildren. I'm just so delightful that uh, they're with me here today to join this, this celebration. But uh, our AMVETS is led by a women veteran, Su Suzanne uh, mills who will be doing a, a speaking here in a minute. But what I'd like to do right now is um, just acknowledge um, our uh, our fundraising here. Uh, where's uh, Terry? Terry Miller? Is Terry here? She went to check on the food. <laughs> Did she? I, I, I'd just like to acknowledge Terry. She's really a hard worker. She's my assistant, but also works with the other tribal uh, councilmen. Um, but we have here, you see this thermometer here. We got that thermometer. And uh, our, the amount that we have um, on this thermometer is, uh, and I'll, I'll hurry up here because it's getting warm out here, but is, is um, a $200,000 goal. What we've allocated toward the Shakopee grant was um, uh, $100,000. And so what I'd like to do is, Terry, I'll give you the honor along with, uh, with our... Uh, Veteran Service Officer Vern Martin, you want to you want to make some red out of that, up right up to to two to a hundred thousand dollars. You can go help her over there, Vern. And 
I'd like us to give us a hand to the Shakopee tribe when we get when you see that there. This is this is going to go right up there. I hope there's red under there. That, that doesn't mean we're in the red. A, here we go. Okay, we're, is it coming off? Yeah. That darn duct tape sticks. There it goes. Somebody want to get a good photo of that? Look at it, it's getting red. We got two of these thermometers. We're going to have these around the community here. Uh, as we're going forward, we'll have it at our veterans' powwow. I was talking to Rusty that uh, we would like to have the ribbon cutting uh, at probably around the veterans' powwow would be a really good time. So is that is that at uh, 100,000? Let's give it a hand there. Now I'd like you to help make this a little higher, okay? Before we leave, we have that uh, birch bark uh, container here. I'd like everyone here, if, if you could just dig in your pocket to. We could launch this forward if you if you give something. You know, it's a tradition of our people to give, is it not? And we'd like you to make our contribution here because Le Couture is going to make this work. We're going to get there to that 200,000. Uh, we're looking at this with, oh, probably within about about a year or maybe a little longer. But we'd like to move it up, just bump it up a little bit here today. I also want to thank the El Le Couture Amvets for their contribution uh, of $500. They gave $500 as well. And the other day they, they raised four, $4,500, was it, that they raised at Walmart. Vernon said he's going to get him some new tires. No, he didn't say that. So uh, here we go. So look, at, uh, we're just glad to see this already. Again, we thank the Shakopee Middle Rock and Sioux community, uh, the leaders there, Chairman Crooks and uh, and the others that serve there uh, to help us here at Le Couture. So I thank you. I'm just very honored to be here today. And, uh